ignore the super wet hair. Hey guys, it's Kaz here and today I'm doing a video that's a little bit different. Well, I've done one before so it's not that different, but it's kind of different. So, I'm going to be doing a scroller box unboxing and some sort of artwork today. So I think I did one of these in like February or March, something like that, a while ago. Basically, when they email me and say, oh, it's on offer for £10, I say, right, that's when I'm going to get it then. This is an art subscription box. It's normally 15 quid, which is not too bad anyway, but it was on offer for a tenner with free PMP. So I'm like, £10 for some fun art supplies? Yes. Don't know what's in it yet. We're going to do a little bit of an unboxing, then I'm going to do some sort of picture. I'll link the video from whenever I did that last one above and below. Check that out. So with that one, just a little spoilers if you want to go over there and watch it. But I was kind of like a little bit disappointed in what I got. Basically in that one, among a few other things, there was liners and a white gel pen. And I was like, oh, but I've got liners and white gel pen. Why would I need this? Here's the thing. Literally every single day since I got that, I've used them liners. And I've used that white gel pen a lot. So... I'm taking back my moan from that one. Here is me removing that moan. I don't think it was a big moan, but it was a little bit of a moan. In fact, I've been having quite a bit of fun with a white gel pen recently because I had a bit of black scrap paper on my desk and then I was just drawing on it with white gel pen. I thought, hey, that looks cool. So I'm just gonna make like a big scribble and then, and then do it bigger. So I've just been doing this just in my spare time. It's just been sat on my desk and I just think it's a really fun thing, so maybe I shouldn't mind that I've got a white gel pen because I now I need to buy some more because I've been using it loads. But anyway, back to this one. I'm going to take this, I'm going to do a flat lay and then open it like that so you can see all the stuff. And then do some sort of art. So here we go. Here is the box. It's on a slight angle because I'm on an angulated table. Oh, that looks very pretty so I think this oh that's very nice this is a scroller zine I'm not gonna look for it because it tells you like stuff about what's in here and stuff I'll look at that in a minute but the front color is giving me watercolor vibes so there we go here is the print of the artist I don't even know if that's upside down it is oh yeah it makes more sense now trees splat it's very abstract it's like an abstract landscape and there is the artist's stuff instagram twitter words here we have some the langston mold made form rond watercolor de la rowney i'm saying so many words it's watercolor paper 300 gsm pretty darn thick and we get how many pages do we get in there so we get six pages in there, which is pretty nice. Now let's open the main things. So here's a sticker. There's always a sticker. I think that's really pretty actually. There's always some sort of sweet in here as well. We've got a menthol type of mint that's the word i'm looking for there's always some sort of pencil as well this is something that i don't really get i know that it's like nice to just do art with the supplies in the box but personally for me i'm just like everybody's got a thousand pencils you don't need a pencil every time but at least this looks a little bit different midnight black graphite it's quite a thick nib on there so maybe it's going to work a little bit different to other sort of normal pencils i've got there's also a little brush guy here, so maybe this is watercolour as well, or works with watercolour to not bleed. I don't know, we shall see. But, I guess, in terms of pencils, it's quite different, so it's not too bad. Ooh, graphite paint pan set. I've been wanting, like, a set like this for so long, because it's just really nice and small, and you could take it places, even though we're not allowed to go anywhere at the moment, but we can take it places. If this is anything to go by, I think them colours are absolutely gorgeous, especially like this end of them. Really pretty. Here it is. Doan is a pretty decent brand, so that's always a bonus. How do you open this thing? Here we go. 
You get all your colours, you get a brush with it as well, and a little sponge over here to dab stuff off. And then the little menu, so it tells you about all the things. The challenge is liquid landscape, which makes sense considering the print that we got with it. And now we've opened it, we can have a little look in here. So there you go, it tells you all the different things that we've got. The artist gives you a little bit of a rundown and tells you how to use the paints. These are really nice actually. I really like these more than the print that came with it. I like the colours. Some more tips and tricks and how to do things. I think this gallery is from the last box. And then some landscape picks. But the thing that I like to do, I say I like to do, I've done it once because I've got one of these boxes, is check out how much these things would cost if I bought them on their own. Because I'm all about a bargain and getting your money's worth. So this pan set on Google on its own is anywhere between like 15 to 23, 20. It's quite expensive, 20 pound, 25 pound. So the fact that this box is a tenner means you've already got, boom, got the money's worth straight there. And I'm looking forward to giving it a go. I'm going to leave you here, have a little look through the book, see all the tips and tricks, figure something out, come back. So... Here's a message from one of our sponsors, and when you come back, we'll do some art. Hi. I just placed my water on the floor because I'm about to make some room for it. And so it's just decided that it's going to drink them all. That That's for my watercolour. Thank you. Okay, so it is me from the future, and first of all, obviously, got to swatch everything. Well, first of all, let me just say I definitely pronounced graffitint twice wrong, so I do know what that word is. Graffitint. I said graffitint twice, soz. But yeah, just swatching out all the paints. The thing about these watercolours is, as you can probably tell by the name, the base is graphite, so all of the watercolours have this like silvery sheen when they dry like a normal graphite pencil. So that's something different, something cool. And the pencil is also pretty much the same sort of thing, but in pencil form, so you can dissolve it in water. It's like a watercolour pencil. It's based in graphite, but then also has a colour. And yeah, I think it's kind of a, it's an interesting sort of medium that I've never heard of before. So it was fun to try out. Something that I didn't try and do until after all the paints, which you'll see in a second, is actually dip the pencil in water. It definitely works better dipped in water. It's a lot more opaque, but I did that at the end. So I decided that I'm going to do two pictures for this. Obviously the prompt was liquid landscape. And the first landscape I'm doing here, both of them are based on pictures that I took personally. The first photo is a picture I took in Oslo in 2017 and it's taken from the top of the Oslo Opera House when it was sunset. So there's loads of really cool colours in there, that's why I chose that one. And then the second one is a photo that I took from one of the fjord islands called Malmoya which is really close to Oslo. And in 2017, I stayed on Malmoya. So this photo was taken then. And I'm not even sure what the city or the town is in the backdrop. Because it's not Oslo. Because it's like the the place that I took it wasn't facing Oslo. So it's somewhere else. But yeah, that's what that one's based on. And also, let's just throw it out here. I don't really have a lot of experience with watercolours, so all of these different techniques that I'm doing are just sort of me making stuff up, hoping that it works. And yeah, there we go, that's me trying the black. I'm realising it's way more black when I dip it in water. So, just while the whole picture's getting put together, I just want to go back to the price point because for me the price and how much value you're getting for the box is one of the most important things. So earlier on I mentioned just the paint and I had a little bit of a closer look and pretty much the cheapest you can get it for is £20. I did earlier on in the video say like 16 15 but on a, a deeper dive those prices were from websites that had P&P that was like 4 or 5 quid. So 
in the long run, £20, which, I mean, straight away, the box costs £10, so you've already got your value there. The paper, which is an exclusive to Scrawler Box, so I couldn't find an exact price, but I would say probably around £4, just from looking at other sizes, like A5 there, and then the amount of pages, about four quid. And then the graphite tint pencil, about two quid. So, all in all, £26, the cheapest you can get it for. For a box that was a tenner with free PMP, so can't really moan about that, can you? Right, so here is when I'm putting the colours down, and I think this is a problem I had throughout both of the images, is that I definitely didn't use enough pigment for this one or the next one. I think when I did the thumbnails, obviously I was colouring in a really tiny picture, so the amount of paint that was on my paintbrush made it really dark and really vibrant, but the problem I had with both of the bigger pieces is that I didn't factor in the fact that they were way bigger and clearly needed more pigment so I mean here you can see me try and rectify it and put a bit more colour on top but I definitely feel like both pictures could and should have been darker more vibrant more colourful so yeah that's something that I would definitely do different if I was doing this again as you can see you meant to just use stuff that's in the box but I did have a big massive paintbrush just to do these big washes because if I tried to do it with that tiny one it would have taken forever. And then just throwing down the older uh, background. With watercolours you don't really have to be really specific with it. You can just throw the sort of shapes down and then colour them in and it works. So that's always a fun bonus. Here you can see how much better the whole dipping it in and then colouring it in black works with the colour and the pigment rather than just trying to colour it on as a pencil. I don't really know what to say now, I mean, you, you're seeing what's happening. I'm just, just sat here trying shit and hoping that it works. Um, the whole sky technique, I think it worked alright when I first did it, when I put the colours down and then got the big paintbrush and went over it. But I think I should have done it with less water on so it didn't take as much pigment away. But you know, we live and we learn. Here again, I started to do the shadows but clearly as the water in the image dried it looks only slightly purplish rather than actually dark. So I put all the effort into doing this and then I had to just darken it all up again because I'm terrible. <laughs> And then I had to just kind of go around all of the shadows and the reflection in the water. So, not the best, but that's the good thing about watercolours. You can just build up and build up and build up. And to be fair, in the next image you will see me do this, but to more extremes. So, we'll wait for that and then I'll tell you then what happened in my brain. But yeah, just chucking down colours, making it look good, hopefully-ish. This one doesn't look too bad with the pigment at the moment, but because everything's wet with watercolour, you want to make it darker than you was hoping for, because when it dries, it dries lighter. And I just didn't take that into consideration in my mind. Here, this bit, I was adding sort of the cloud shapes-ish, and I think it would have looked better if I just left it dry like this, but then I did the whole washing with a big paintbrush over it again, and I don't think it worked as well as it would have if I just left it like this on top of the background colour. It stands out more and then I and then I get the big brush and I don't dry it enough and then it sort of just blends into the background. And also because it wasn't dry enough I took away more of the colour in the background so I had to add it in again because clearly I don't know anything about watercolours. But it's fun to try anyway. And there we go, that is the whole image. Also, P.S. I have just loads of random washi tape. I've got a massive stack of like about 80 or something. So, all the ones that I would never use for anything else, I just used to stick down pictures when I'm doing paintings. It was a bit wobbly, so I just put it under some books to make it flat. And here we go. This is the second one. So, 
I tried to pencil some, some stuff in, but as soon as I started putting water on it, you couldn't see it anyway. But, you know, it's nice to get a bit of an idea down of what's going to happen. This one, I definitely think, didn't work as well as the first one. And you'll see why. Did the same technique. This is wet on wet technique. So you put water down first and then you put pigment on top of it. It looks like it's going alright at this point. But again, I used that brush and it just wipes off too much of the colour. And like a fool, I didn't think, oh, maybe I should add more. I think I was just in the mindset of, oh yeah, that's the base done. Right, so here... I don't know if you could tell because of how quickly I sped up but when I was doing the thumbnails I used a bit of tissue to get some of the ink up and then draw the lines on top of it. I thought oh hey maybe it'll be better with cotton buds because they have a small surface area. Yeah I yeah, tried it with one, didn't work, had to go back to the tissue. So this was to get the lights in the reflection of the water. I thought it'd be a good idea to put the whole colour down and then pick up the paint leaving the white lines down and then add the reflections on there and I feel like it worked enough again I'm not an expert at watercolour so I have no idea if there's like a way to do this that's better but here can you see how not dark the sky and the water is and how much effort I'm putting into making these lights actually reflect this is where I went wrong because I did this and then I decided you know what I just need to get rid of all that and start again because it's not dark enough so I just painted over the whole thing after doing that for however long it took me because it wasn't dark enough. Here's where I went wrong again. I feel like I should have put even more colour down on there but I didn't. It happens. The sky would have been better like twice as dark as that. It's all a learning curve. I do think the lines maybe looked better when I first did them and then on the second go it didn't work as well. Look, even just trying to pick up the, the paint didn't work as well on the second time because I'd already let stuff dry in the background. So yeah, not my best work, not gonna lie, but you know, you have to dry stuff out. And then because I'd already done it once, I was just chucking these in and it just does not look as thin and nice. Oh, also my battery died, which is why I'm so far up, which is why I'm showing you how I coloured it in and stuff. I coloured in the base bit with the pencil. You can see all the, the little lines in the water. And at this point I was just adding some details, some of the rocks at the bottom. You didn't really need to see me doing all the same thing again because you'd see me do it once and then I rubbed it out. So, you know... It's not too bad that my uh, my battery died there. I feel like I'm chatting absolute shit at the moment, to be honest. I don't know what to say, and I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Here I am, showing you how I did the base, but, but with this bit of land sticking out. At this point, I think I was listening to a True Geordie podcast. Before that, I'd listened to two other podcasts as well, I think. Podcasts are a good thing to listen to when you're doing painting or any sort of art because you don't have to really pay attention to looking at anything but your mind is listening to stuff. This also shows another thing that I did wrong. I know there's about a thousand things but because there's that bit of land there there shouldn't be any of the light on the bottom end of the land but you can see some a couple of blue lines and a yellow line that goes past where that rock would have stopped them so if I had done it again or if I didn't go so crazy and quick on the second go around I would have known not to do that. But also look it's dried, look at how light the sky still is, look at how light the water still is. You've got to make stuff dark guys. This isn't the first time that I rubbed stuff out on this picture either because I threw in this whole cityscape in the background. Well, the problem is I didn't throw in the cityscape. Oh, here are just some reflections on the stones. I think the, the stones in the front half looks all right. A bit more reflection. I got ahead of myself. 
It's hard to do voiceovers after you've done the thing. Right, so here we go. I was throwing in all of the colours, all of the lights at the top. And looking back on it, I think it looks all right. But while I was in that position, I put all these lights on and then I decided that I needed to do the background first and then put the lights on because it made no sense. I rubbed it all out by using the big brush across it and started again. Putting more of the, the black cityscape, putting in some shapes first and then the lights afterwards. But then I think I put too much shapes in and then you couldn't see the lights as much because they weren't as bright and vibrant. But again, for the 37th time, it's all a learning curve. Here we go, just throwing in the different colour lights. You can't really tell though that they're different coloured. They're sort of mashed together. It happens. Even though I've moaned about both of these pictures a lot, um, I'm going to put them with my Redbubble. It's going to be linked in the description. I've literally sold one sticker ever, so I don't expect anything from it, but it's there if you want to have a look. The actual photographs are on there as well, which are way better. So yeah, have a look at that if you want. After I scanned them in, I did darken them a little bit as well, just because that's what I wanted to do originally with the colours. But I didn't get rid of any of the blemishes or any of the... Talking about blemishes, any of the... Uh, rip off the outside before the painting's dry and then get paint on the white lines bit like here Bloop. so yeah I, I flattened that one down as well and then i brought them both back together so you can see them in their full glory here we are that's everything that one didn't turn out too bad i quite like the colors of it it could have had more information in the picture but i quite like the colors Neither of them are bad, they're not exactly what I wanted, I wanted more pigment, but hey, it was fine. Let me know down below if you enjoyed watching this, I want to do more art videos on here, so hopefully you did enjoy it. Let me know how I can talk shit in a good way instead of this video because I just talked absolute bollocks for ages. And if this is your first video by me and you enjoy it, then please check out some of the others, and if you continue to enjoy, then please subscribe, that'd be awesome. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a few days with another video. Bye.